Hello, friends, and welcome to the Optimized Advisor Podcast, where we focus on optimizing the well-being and best practices of insurance and financial professionals today. On this show, our objective is to help you optimize your life, optimize your profession, and learn from other optimized advisors. I'm your host, Scott Heinela. We hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Optimize Advisor Studio, Josh Lukowski. You know what? This is kind of like a dream come true for me. We've what? been talking about this for a while. Here you know, we are. Absolutely. And it's great to be out here in California mm. with you. That's right. With and the just seagulls at, oh and, my the, gosh. and the guacamole. It's a beautiful thing out here, <laughs> you know? And just coming off of a great event with local advisors here. We are. It was awesome. This is a new saying that Dan- I introduced Danielle to probably a long time ago. She always gives me a hard time that <clears throat> she learns a lot of funny words and sayings, but there's no grass growing under our feet here. Mm. We are on the go. We had a wonderful meeting this morning, and we are now in studio this afternoon. The life so, of Scott. Not too bad, man. Di- well, I don't know about that. Director... <laughs> Josh Lukowski, Director of Marketing Strategies and... Account Services. There you go. It's a pretty impressive title, don't you think? What's the acronym? I don't know. D- <laughs> it may a lot sp- of letters. It may spell out something bad, Scott. I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> All right. We digress. So our first conversation on the Optimize Advisor podcast was episode 24. I don't know if you know that. Wow. But it was talking about branding, brand awareness, meaningful marketing of which we are now going to expand upon that conversation. I'm down for that. Okay. Uh, High level, right? It's how to become known and build trusted relationships in a world filled with so much noise, so much clutter, so much confusion. How do we attract? How do we connect? And how do we transform? Those are some deep. So we want to unpack each one of those in today's convo. Let's try. All right. I'm looking forward to to diving in with you. So we started off by talking a little bit beforehand about, you know, the importance as it relates to marketing. Well, I guess, first of all, at its highest level, could you explain what meaningful marketing is in a sentence or two before we start to... In a sentence or two? You know me better than that, Scott. Okay. (laughs) Let me tell you a story. In a short brief. In a short (laughs) brief. No, I mean, marketing with meaning is really having a sense of being rooted in one's purpose, mission, and values, and that that is shared across from a company's perspective or a product's perspective or a service industry, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter across the board, but that brand is represented in a way in truth. And then it's also leading people to a higher standard or ideal Mm. within their own life. How is it? How is the brand, the service, the product, what is it contributing to your life? And to do that messaging in a way that is, honest and it has integrity and it's truthful and there is real result that comes out of that experience that is real meaningful marketing yeah and i I would say it's rooted um in and i would challenge everybody to do this exercise whether or not you feel as your current practice has a, a listed set of values today do this every few years because i would argue that maybe uh the cheese moves, the paradigm shifts, uh, the culture of your organization modifies a little bit. Where I'm getting to this is there's a great process that you can go mm-hmm. through where there's a list of probably 40, 50 different values, words that are listed. Yes. And you go through this kind of reduction process of mm-hmm. take that 40, 50, just go through and really quick highlight and slide over the 10 to 20 that connect with you on on the first level and then refine it again in half and then refine it again in half. And what you'll do is you'll find yourself down to two to four, right? The goal is to get yourself down to the most important values that strike your chord in life. And from there, I think you have a basis of, okay, this, th- this is what is meaningful to me. This is what is important to me or my firm 
uh, and, and what we're trying to instill. And then from there, my question to you would be, what would be the next steps in those building blocks mm. from a marketing perspective? So from a marketing perspective, again, I think in all things important in life, we need people, we need to surround ourselves with people mm -hmm. of expertise that can speak into our lives, that can walk by our side uh, to help us to get to those next levels, right? right? We talked a little bit about that on the episode 24. Yeah. Um, as one of the five key pillars in terms for marketing success. Right. So from that partnership perspective, it's really being able to work with a liaison mm -hmm. inside of the industry right. or who's been working in an industry that's able to walk you through that process to help refine. Right. I think it's very much like putting gold through a fire and at different temperatures and refining that gold yeah. of all impurities. You know, I like how you really stated that in terms of the approach and f and doing that within, you know, every three years, five years, maybe seven years. What does right, that right, look right, like? Right. And revisiting that. Um, I do think it's interesting when you do that well with somebody who's, who's skilled in that area, what you find is that you hit a bedrock, a foundation mm. of core belief. And really throughout the time, that foundation, that core belief foundation is the thing that still remains. Mm -hmm. It's like building a house on rock versus right. building a house on sand. Right. I think oftentimes we think of businesses that we got to change with the times in a manner where we're, we just, we have no foundation. Right. So from that perspective, it's a refinement. But if you identify that core foundation first and you lay that down and you know who you are, you know what your mission is, you know what your values are, you know what your purpose is, then as time goes on, it's a matter of no matter what's happening in the world in terms of technology or how people are interacting with each other or connecting with each other, that core value, that foundation doesn't change. Yeah. But the refinement process does. And, and it only in, supports that more. Yeah, and it's interesting, you know, in, in the context of our of our listeners, right, and our customers as a firm, we're talking about wealth managers, financial professionals, um, you know, financial advisors, insurance professionals. I think it becomes pretty hard and challenging to say, okay, you know, there's so many of us, right? Mm. And and for many of us, I, I'm I'm a small practice. Maybe my interest isn't to become scalable on, enter, on an enterprise level, right? I, I am the business. I am representative of the business. And I'm a little scared about choosing a path, a path of this is who I am. And there, and, and the convert and the, you know, the consequence of that would be, I'm going to turn off a certain audience. Uh, but you made the note here of you know, talking about the importance of delivering a real value versus just being a cheap imitation. Uh, and so the importance there, I think, is, and you do a good job of helping our advisors of say, okay, no, 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 let's just focus on you for a moment. Who are you? You know, what do you care about in life? What's near and dear to you? Let's at least start there to gain some shape and clarity. Um, mm. And so from there, we build upon that. Right, and that's the rock and the foundation. Uh, the challenge, I think, then becomes okay. Well, through that, how does that convert now to attraction? Mm, great question. So, in regards to you, have to combine two things together. So, once you have that foundation built, mm -hmm. there's two things that spring, have to spring forth. One of it is it empowers you to be able to speak with absolute clarity about who you are and what you do for others mm. and how you support them and better their lives, right? Right. Within the financial planning space, we always talk about freeing people from the burden of financial worry. Right. Especially at Producers Choice. Right. That's one of those cores is like, it's not just insurance solutions. Right. It's not just financial education. It's not just marketing services. Right. These are all conduits to doing something of greater good for the people that our partners serve. Right. Families, individuals, 
Businesses. Businesses. So what does that look like? And what does that mean to their life? Mm -hmm. That's that bedrock foundation, you know, from a perspective of when we get up in the morning, that's what we're thinking about. We're not thinking about the the result first of we have to have this many annuity contracts or, you know, this many life insurance policies. It's taking the approach of how can we help advisor, and I, I won't use any names, but advisor A or B or C. Mm -hmm. How are we going to help them in their life from a business perspective, but also from a relationship and a life perspective? Right. We're all trying to manage so many things. Right. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with that, right, you can speak with absolute clarity in your message. Right. And you stand firm on that. Right. The second part of that, right? So marketing, it's all sensory. It's sight. It's sound. Sometimes it's touch or feel or smell. Right. Depending on the experience, whether it's live or in person. Right. But all those attributes do contribute to an overall experience and feeling that's connecting something in one's mind and their heart right. to something of a greater value that speaks to them, right? Okay. That they can align with. Yep, yep. But the visualization portion of it, so I think about the spoken word, the right. mission. Right. Right? Okay. The statement. Yep. The visualization. You put those things together, what does that cause? True attraction. Have you ever been in a room with somebody where you either, the way that they presented themselves, or maybe perhaps after they spoke, that you're mesmerized by that person? Yes. Tell me about Absolutely. that experience. Why, why was that for you? What was that? Because that is attraction. Right. So tell me about what, what that. They, what they possessed, what, what it was that they delivered. So, yeah, a person um, who provided <clears throat> that experience for me was very well, um, certainly confident. Mm. They were, um, I don't necessarily care too much about you know, materialism per se, but cleanliness mm. is, is where I appreciate and respect, right? Um, conversely, if somebody's too overdone, I get turned off by that. Mm. Uh, now, uh, highly proficient, highly knowledgeable, disciplined. You can tell that they've been rehearsed. They know their stuff. They're highly knowledgeable. Those are things that impress me. Additionally to that, and this is where it's, it's, it's important to recognize that everybody's lens of this is going to be a little bit different, right? So maybe, maybe. we'll talk okay. about that. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Um, but, but, uh, not to be, not to be perfect. They do not need to be perfect. They need to be human. They need to be endearing. They need to be honest. Um, and they need to be confident. So let me ask and you when they've done that, that's somebody I connect with. Let me ask you a question with that. Do you believe that those characteristics and qualities that you're speaking of, people who are genuine, mm -hmm. confident, capable, their abilities, they're almost sacrificial in nature in terms of what they're able to do from their own being? How do you mean? Are they rare? Is it like a gemstone? Are they a diamond or a piece of coal? Like conceptually, would you say would that say, there's all these types, there's there's a plethora of people? Right. Or is it that there's something rare, unique? Yeah, yeah I would think there's something in between. Mm. They're not a coal, they're not a gem. I like that. Yeah. I mean, if I'm being honest. So let's talk about that for a second, though. Okay. So... And you can challenge me on this. I have a couple beliefs about attraction. Let's hear it. And what does that look like? I've done a lot of thinking about it. Okay. I won't tell you what I'm doing I'm all while, ears. while I'm thinking about it. Okay. It's all legal stuff <laughs> for the most part. I am in California. I don't know. There you go. Just, yeah. Michelle, That's I'm right. kidding. Um, so with that, no, really kind of these two truths about human nature. 
So maybe we can challenge that today, right? Okay. Let's do that. The idea that people at a kind of core foundational level have a natural attraction to things that they deem as valuable, that are rare, maybe a little bit difficult to to obtain. obtain. Yep, yep. Exclusive. Exclusivity. Um, Rarity. But it's also something that it it speaks to their own higher aspirations and ideal. Mm. I want what I can't have. Right. Right. Or, or it I inspires. Want, I, want, I, want, I want what I don't have. Right. Because I'm going to obtain that. Right. I'm That's, going to pursue that. That is the spark of inspiration and passion to actually get people to to burst beyond themselves of what they believe that they can be because they see something else mm. that speaks to them within. The other thing, too, is that they feel that they, out of that experience, things that make people feel important and cared for right. is highly sought after. Right. Highly sought after. Hmm. Interesting. So that's my human truth number one. Okay. I would agree with that. All right. Oh, they man, that's easy. Good. Yeah, I, don't, I don't object All to right. that. All right. Okay. Absolutely. So let's talk that about the sense. second one. Okay. Now, this one I'll say most people. So this is kind of cutting it down a little bit because I don't think everybody takes this type of approach. But there's a subset of individuals within the world who truly want better. Mm -hmm. Now, you could subdivide those categories into I only want better for myself. Right. Or I want better for others. Or I want better for others and myself. Interesting. To me, the latter is it. Is the holy grail. It is the holy grail. Yeah. Because oftentimes, as you, I, you know, for me, I, I think we talked a little bit, you know, even before we were shooting, and the sense of value of having a sense of intrinsic value for all of us. Right. And yeah. what does that mean? Right, How do right. we treat each other, right? For me, it's so much easier to treat my, my kids or my wife in a manner that's loving and caring, but it's difficult for me to do that for myself. Yeah. So that ideal of really, truly wanting and aligning actions in a way that you're bettering the lives of people around you and you're bettering your own life as well. Mm. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Trying yeah. to get there. All tides rise together, right? Yeah. If I approve myself and approve press upon other people and can rise the tide with other people, then what can we ultimately achieve? Now, the great thing is this about human beings. What happens? What do most people love to do upon those breakthroughs or great achievements or celebrations in life? Well, they party, they celebrate, they pat themselves on the back. I, they, I reward myself. What else? Um, Think of the, the generation we're living in in terms of being able to take a look inside my world. I'm going to oh, post it for you. Of course. Social media. Absolutely. Sharing. Sharing the story. Sharing the news. Yes. Sharing in the celebration. So that everybody can see, or at least yeah. all my followers. Or and, friends and or family. More, yeah, yeah, which that's a whole other. Again, it goes back to the two. Slope. Do I just want better for myself? Just only wanting better for others or the combination of the two? So in that, it becomes a slippery slope, right? Ooh. Who am I doing this? F it becomes a very delicate balance of, am I staying true to myself? Do I get off kilter? Because you only you, if you start just a little bit off task, you find yourself in an area of no man's land, right? Uh, and you, 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 you mentioned this earlier too is, you know, putting lipstick on a pig versus, you know, truly putting lipstick on the lips that I have. Maybe you don't even need the lipstick, Scott. There you go. You are, you are that beautiful. Okay, thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. 
But there's, oh. there is truth there. So I do believe those two common truths. So what does that... Well, how- and I think today, in today's day and age, it's very easily to be persuaded by what others are doing. You mentioned the word social media or just the constant access to branding, marketing, um, everything else that's going on there. And, and I think it's a false thought of saying, this gives me a platform to create whatever image I want. And so people have that thought of, wow, this is, this is an opportunity for me to paint whatever picture it is I want. And the question I have is, well, is that picture such a distant reality of who you actually are and who you're, who are you rooted as and what are your values? Mm. It isn't about creating a picture that I feel is going to attract. I don't know that that's sustainable. So let me ask you a question on that. I love you. I love you, Scott. No, I love that you brought it up, and I do love you too. Um, in that scenario, if you were to take, let's just make an imaginary person, right? Yeah, yeah. In the sense of, hey, I can use all these tools, all these filters, all these modern day platforms. Right. To show the world any story I really want to tell them. To portray. To portray it. Let's say we take two of these imaginary people. Okay. We have person A and person B. Okay. If person A does not have any core foundation or deeper belief in terms of those values the mission, the purpose. Right. Versus person B, who does. They both can tell the world the exact same story. Right. Right? So how do you see through what is true and what is false? And what is a facade? And that's some of the things that keep me up at night as a marketing director because I take the role very, very seriously mm. because it's the power or once you understand how to attract, how to create curiosity, how to speak to people's inner senses of feeling and belief to connect with them. Right. You can manipulate the heck out of people if you really wanted to. And we've experienced and seen that over time. Yeah. It has happened. It has happened. Yeah, so if I take that, well, go ahead. No, I. So that's what I'm saying. Is that's a difficult? That's a really difficult question. Mm. How do you decipher? Yeah, and I think in the midst of that difficulty, time is a beautiful thing, and being able to experience longevity. Let's say bringing it back down from a to a business perspective, mm-hmm. right? Or as a financial planner, right? You can't have a long sustaining business built on some image you're putting out there that is not of your core or is not true. It's not going to happen. Yeah. If you're not really placing people's first from a fiduciary standpoint, if you're not keeping promises with your clients, right. If you're not truly dedicated and doing everything possible to help them plan for their life. Right. What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? Yeah. Yeah. Very much um, so. Yeah. So, again, going back, time is a beautiful thing. It's also our biggest challenge. Sure. Yeah. But it will reveal it will reveal things right. as it moves forward. Correct. Okay. So, connection. Yes. What does this mean? You know, connecting. How do I? I've attracted. I've, I've, I've sorted that let's just say and now we're on to connection and what a challenge right how do i connect with people today we've touched a little bit on the digital world uh, what other means of connection exist today radio television websites um, all the various social media platforms which are not all created equal uh, in-person events experiences Client appreciation events. Would connection be direct marketing, mail marketing, print marketing? 
all of this? How do I figure out in what way do I connect? And then from there, what is my strategy for connecting? That's a process. And it's a challenging process for advisors today. Man, you got me thinking pretty deep. Yeah. I think, I think the easy place to start for people, which I always push back to, you know, because social media is so intertwined in our daily life personally, that we're naturally gravitated towards, well, that's where I'm going to connect with customers. And it's not a wrong answer. Uh, however, to do so is a real, re- is a significant requirement. And that requirement tells us from a social media perspective, I have to be original. In other words, the content I'm creating, right? It doesn't, it can't be shared. The, I, I have to be in tune with the algorithms and how the metrics work. I have to be very, very active in it. Otherwise, I argue you're probably wasting your time. So I would say a couple of things. That's really good, man. You're cha- you you challenge me a lot. Good. I appreciate okay. you for I, that. That's why I'm here. That's what I like about you. Yeah. <laughs> that's why no I'm pain, here. No pain, no right. game, baby. That's right. So I think with connection, I'm going to bring up something personal, actually. Okay. So in regards to the mechanisms of attraction within marketing, right? Understanding what people are desiring and what's going to help turn their head. Mm-hmm. And especially within the financial space, what does that look like? Right. Financial freedom, independence, time to do what they want, right? Mm-hmm. That's what we're going after. Peace of mind. Trust, Peace of trust, mind. Trust is a big one trust, for people, right? right? But a sense of where there's true peace and security within that process. Right. If we're living a life of peace and security, it's pretty darn good. Following, yeah, absolutely. Add health to that, even better. Right. Add great relationships to it. I think we're close to heaven, right? Yeah. So with that in terms of connection, what does it actually mean to connect with somebody? So I think from a marketing perspective, there's a plethora of tools to help drive to that connection point. Mm -hmm. But at that point, if you want a real connection, it's got to be human to human. And I know that's a hard thing to, what do you mean? What about all this digital? Yeah. That's just all the means, man, to get it to the point, especially within the advisory space. Because it's so when personal. When you say human to human, we we are we are affirming in person. In yeah. person. Body to body. Yeah. Now. And that's becoming more and more of a challenge. Absolutely. You know. But here's a perfect example. I got this hat on. Right. I love, love this love hat. That. I love this hat. And it's not just for promotional I purpose. Too. I do too. Because, you know, hey, you know. But you sent this to me on my birthday. I did. With a note. It's an optimized advisor podcast. Yeah. Yeah. On your birthday. That's right. With a note. So that action alone, I can't, I can't even explain like, like what does, what that did, Hmm. you know, why? Yeah. And and not to diffuse it. It was, it was a, so to divulge, it was a thought and it took my point in this again, not to, downplay it, but how much time did it really require of me? A few minutes, a genuine thought and a five minute note. Right. So to that point for advisors or people connecting, right? Right. Yeah. But that act alone, like did something even inside where it's like, wow, mm. this guy's freaking amazing. <laughs> I no, but the that. sense. So, how does that apply? Yes. Then, from an advisor's perspective. Yeah. Because I think, in in, I may be crucified for saying this as a marketing director. Speak. But you cannot take away. You cannot take away, the human to human contact element to it, of showing that you actually are thinking and caring about somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that means. 
There may not be a digital solution yeah. for it. Yeah. There may not be. Right, right. For what we're talking about. Yeah. I want to be clear there. Yeah. Because there's importance of creating great video and educational content and things to draw people of creating a, a greater sense of awareness for whatever the, the topic may be or subject, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm not talking yeah, about that, the messaging I'm because we're talking about the connection portion. Right. The fact that somebody's going to care enough to be like, I need to spend time with my advisor. So what are, what are the advisors doing, right? And how can we help them with different ideas of connecting with their clients? Correct. Person, person, showing yeah. that they care. Yeah, absolutely. And, pre- and, and then again, from the, the great thing about the, the digital tools that are available from scheduling and and managing that from a optimizing your own time perspective, right? You got to use that, but I don't know if there's any way around from actually connecting with people to where they're going to want to do what they need to do, what's required of them. Yeah, I mean, it obviously is exponentially more challenging to connect with people who don't know me yet or don't, you know, in a generic sense, right? They don't know yeah. me and my firm yet as the advisor. Going back to the very beginning, it begins with having a message and a story rooted in in who you are and what your values are because it becomes then become much more natural yeah to deliver upon uh, and connecting with the right audience in other words if i'm always trying to portray a message and an image that i am not uh, and be a facade then eventually it it becomes transparent it backfires uh it, it's definitely an easier task to, I think, be intentional and thoughtful of connection to my existing clients. But even to that end, I think many advisors neglect that I need to continue being thoughtful and intentional in connection with my existing clients because they're already my, my, my clients. I meet with them once or twice a year. I'm going through the process with them. Pause on that for a moment and think about uh, about them, about how you got them, how that journey began, and what are some other ways that you can connect with them that have nothing to do with the transactions. I love that because yeah. here's a couple ideas that advisors can do right now, today, free of charge. But if they do this, I guarantee them out there in the ethos in the world, that they will start seeing even more activity with their current clients. Okay, share, please. So on the edge of my seat. On the on on a common basis, how many how many clients? Right, just on average. I know it varies based off of what the advisor is is trying to do, either with their practice or who they're focusing on. Right. Yeah, individual advisor. Yeah, I would say 150 to 250. All right. Yeah, Let's somewhere. say somewhere in between yeah. there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's say 200. That's right, a nice. Right, right. I mean, that's pretty. It's a nice number, yes. a, a nice book of business, yep, right? Yep. The challenge would be this out there. Send every single client, and this is using digital technology, Mm. a text message through their phone, random, not knowing, expressing your gratitude for them. Let them know that you're thinking about them. Mm. Maybe asking them a question about some somebody important in their life or what's been going on in their life. Yep. Don't speak about business. Don't speak about a transaction. Don't speak about, hey, I got a new idea for you. You send one text message to every single client, and you do that one time a month across the board. Yeah. And you see what happens within three yeah, months' time, six right. months' yeah. time, 12 yeah. months' time. Rooted. Relationship. In, rooted in relationship and being genuine. There's something so powerful in that because we are inundated with with entities and corporations and systems who are marketing to us because they just want something from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But when it comes down to the relationship, we have to be the ones who are willing to give to others to let them know that they are cared for, they are thought of, and that they are in good hands. Yeah. What does that great. mean to that's, be in good hands? Yeah, that's wonderful. I love that because the world we're surrounded by is transaction, task, task, transaction. And in that, you know, and not in any specific order, but it's like transaction, transaction, task, task, task. Give me a task, I'll satisfy task. And so how do we get off of that hamster wheel just yeah. for a moment? 
Just, just for, for a, a moment. Bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, next idea. You have another one? So another one, it's, it's similar to that, right? But then it would be writing a note or a right. letter that you do that. And maybe you do that four times. Yeah. Not on their birthday, not on their anniversary. Random. Randomly. But just to let them know, again, that you're thinking about them. Yeah. And sharing thoughts of positivity and, and hopes for their life and their future and their dreams. Yeah. And that, uh, no, it's, that costs it, you nothing. Costs it's you a nothing. Little, a little bit of time. It costs you nothing, yep, but it could yep. mean everything. Mm-hmm. If you are an advisor that perhaps has additional dollars to be able to invest in providing gifts to their clients, right? Yeah. Based off of you know what they're able to do. Correct. Um, under their guidelines or, or or from a compliance standpoint, right? Yeah. That's another area of like you could do that custom wise. Yeah. And I would argue, I, I look a gift is a very interesting one for me in that, um, I'm I'm somewhat opposed to everybody gets the same gift, because where's the where's the, you know, thought that goes into that? Now I've applied a transaction to that meant to be genuine and thoughtful uh, connection. So you're better off putting a little bit of thought into who am I sending this to? You know, what kind of person are they? What are their hobbies? What do they enjoy doing? In a, my last meeting with them, did anything mm-hmm. come about that, that, you know, that, that strikes a chord that I could send to them? Again, in the context of what I'm able to do, um, but being thoughtful about that, you know, put a little bit of thought into that. And people appreciate that. It's kind of like a handwritten note as opposed to just a, you know, a type text message or something that's a printed and it's gone in the mail. Because what I've done now is I've created a transaction for what's meant to be a very personal touch. Right. And this is where that challenge comes in to wavering on either side of, am I doing this out of trying to manipulate somebody and make them feel like I care about them? Right. That's the bigger challenge is is aligning your heart and mind in a way where you actually do. Yeah. And yeah, that there's yeah. no secondary motive. And not it that sounds you so easy, right? And not, yeah, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. And I'm not saying you don't give specific gifts to all clients for other reasons, but to be thoughtful once a year. Yeah. And give them something that. I got a perfect example for you. Fire. That we've done. Uh, actually, it was one of our um, uh our director of independent distribution from the national headquarters. Okay. And looking into new advisor relationship and just, you know, I don't want to call it, it's not like stalking. It's like, you know, Hey, we want to learn more, (laughs) more about John, John Doe. Right. right? Of course. And finding out like, Oh, he, he loves music. He loves records. You know, he had pictures. I love playing guitar. Mm hmm. And uh, he loved his company logo, you know. You, you know a little bit about that. Yeah, a little bit, Music yeah. and guitar, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Send me some pics with Optimize Advisor. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. Um, you don't have to do anything for me. I appreciate you. Um, but no, came up with the idea and said, hey, can we, is there like any, he knew I played guitar. Right. He's like, is there any like custom pick things that we could do he really loves? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Right. You know, and for under fifteen dollars, yeah. And I think that was one of the biggest responses we got back from an advisor, and something. It was just a small gesture, but it wasn't. It wasn't so much even the picks. It was the idea that we took time to think about what he cared about, yeah, absolutely, and wanted to share that with yeah. him. You know, yeah. And that's where the beauty comes in. I mean, yeah. it sounds so easy to be like, oh, send a gift. Write a card, right, right, send a right, text. Right, right, right. Yeah, sure, we could do that. We could check it off a list. Yeah. The challenge is do that with sincerity. Yeah. That's meaningful. That's meaningful. Okay, right? we got two minutes left. Transformation. What does it mean to help transform one's life? Oh, <laughs> I don't think we got time to get into that, Scott. I don't know. Transfer, geez, oh, Pete's. Uh, so kind of going back, right? Meaningful marketing. Number one, attraction. Number two, connection. And number three, which is the ultimate objective, right? Yes. Which is transforming uh, clients or our practice into what? 
the transformation. Let's take what is the what is the greatest symbol of transformation that that is often used that we see in nature? I don't know. From a worm to a butterfly. Oh, butterfly. Transformation. So when I think of transformation, it's being able to take somebody within their position of life from a financial advisory standpoint mm-hmm. and be able to walk through them in a process in a way that they're able to blossom up into that whatever that ideal future is for them. Mm-hmm. I've heard so many stories from advisors that when their clients reach that point, and they recognize and fully understand of what now they can do, the dreams that they thought of and supported with plans from the back back end for 20, 15, 10 years, whatever it may be. Yeah. And the fact that they get to actualize that in their life. Yeah. If you were to, this is what I'd say, right? This is my thought is if you were waving a magic wand and you were to able to articulate true wealth, what does that mean? And I would argue for many people, it really has nothing to do with money. What does it have to do with? And you can fulfill your dreams and together I will help you. And if you can accomplish that, then I would say you have transformed your practice into delivering its promises. I couldn't have said it any better. That was beautiful. I think it's spot right on, man. I don't think we, that's, I think we should end there. I, that's powerful. That is powerful. I don't need to keep going. That is powerful. All right. I can't tell you enough, man. I appreciate you, what you've been able to do with the show. I so look forward to what you're going to do in the future, too. I'm happy for I'm I'm happy for us that we are here. This would not be where it is without you and your team. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, it begins with a vision and a hope, like a lot of us, right? But it. Uh, Cheesy analogy that it's the teamwork that makes the dream work. One episode, one listener at a time. So I appreciate you. Till next time. Same here, my friend. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Please subscribe, like, share, leave a comment or review. Be sure to check us out on social media at Optimized Advisor Podcast. Till next time.